But the good news is, 30 years after I was taken away, when I'm up in the northwest, uh, Aboriginal people in Roman, where I was working, said to me that I do have a family. And so they started a long, slow process of telling me where my family was. And it wasn't, that was in the early 70s, and it wasn't until about 1977 that uh, a, a cheeky young 16-year-old nephew of mine walked into the Commonwealth Employment Service and said, I'm your nephew. I said, that's your family, you know. But I'd been working for NASA in Carnarvon at the tracking station, and I'd played basketball against my cousins, but they were too embarrassed to talk to me in the 60s. So when my nephew, uh, something rang a bell, and I said, come back at lunchtime. So he came back and I said, have I got a brother called Joe, who's now passed away? And he said, yes, that's my uncle. So that was Wednesday. Friday night, we're in the car, and with my two kids who are primary school, we're going to Whitman to pick up some other cousins who I didn't know, and driving to Megathera, 12 hours away. And it was a, a Jim Carter race weekend, and suddenly I'm meeting a thousand relatives. As Richard said, we've got so many family. And it was very emotional with my mother. Uh, so I had my mum for 11 years. Uh, but only in recent years, my cousin Gwen and I were coming back from a funeral in Megathera, or a meeting in Megathera, and she's driving and I'm writing down all the family history I could possibly get out of Gwen, uh, going right back to English Edwards, who we're all uh, from. So it's, a, it's been a long roundabout journey, but we've got all the kids at Sister Kate's back. We're part of the Queen's Park community. Um, we're, we still have our annual fate. We revived it three years ago. It's our big fundraiser. We have good supporters. And from our own fundraising, because we're a self-help charitable organisation, we don't get government funding to run things, we have paid for uh, all the blinds, all the vertical blinds in the units uh, from last year's fate and donations. Uh, we've paid for three fans in each unit. We have paid for shower curtains uh, and uh, through a donation from Andrew Forrest, We've got water tanks, rainwater tanks in all the units. Uh, and so that's the sort of way we've been raising funds as a self-help organisation. And our younger members and our grannies are uh, all coming on board to help us. So that's the sort of thing that we've done in this big full circle. But my own family, uh, which Richard and Gwen are part of in Megathera, um, I mean, Gwenny and I have driven up to Megathera but it's too dangerous now because there's so many big trucks on the road. And I was just saying to Gwen, I'm reluctant now to drive. My eldest son says, you're not driving in that little thing. I've got a high Hyundai i30. You're not driving all that way. It's like 11 hours. So he lends me his big four-wheel drive ute. But even that's not a match for some of those big trucks with three or four trains on them. So Gwen was just telling me about the bus. But the good thing about my family is that the acceptance of me back into my family, even though I know that I was accepted back. A couple of years ago, Gwendy organised that things there that, um, because there's native title in different areas, and Aboriginal groups and families are negotiating with mining, as under the Native Title Act, everybody's required to do. Um, and so we belong part of the big Yamaji Wadjuri land claim. But my family, through Gwen, they asked me to be on the negotiating team uh, with Crosslands Mining to go to the meetings. And as my older brother said to me, he said, we know the country, but you can talk. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. useful for something. And uh, so that's the full circle. So I'm actually a whole person because I know my family. And as Richard said, we've been here for 49,000 years. The 12 months that I spent working in the Northern Territory, General Chalmers said to me, we went round to all these 73 prescribed communities, he said, it doesn't matter where we go, someone's related to you. And one of the bigger communities, you and me, we went there, and people were up in arms about this, this and this, not necessarily at us. And one Aboriginal lady stood up and she came over and she just told them to all shut up. And she said, you don't know this girl. And she said, I've been talking to this girl. I've been talking to this girl. And she said, she's our family. And everyone was very quiet then. And so she was talking about how everyone is connected back through the song lines, back over to uh, the Minkathara area, through our oldies. 
And so ever after that, everyone's quite happy, as Richard said. Once people know who you are, it's not the name or the medal or any of those things. I mean, even when I was a magistrate, and I'll finish here, uh, I was doing a big inquiry and I had to travel around Western Australia in the Gordon Inquiry in 2002. And I got out to Warburton and I know the lands people and I knew that as a woman I would be last at the big meeting to talk. So I said to my staff, we'll sit over here with the women and we'll just wait. Now I had a young white lawyer with me and a seasoned another white Aboriginal lady who knew Aboriginal communities but the white lawyer didn't. And I said to this young lawyer, sit here and try and be quiet because the men will all be speaking first. I said, just watch out for occasional dog fights. <laughs> Dogs have to go everywhere. This kid's frightened. Anyway, we just got on the ground. 2002, I could still get up and down off the ground reasonably well. It's a bit hard now. But I've just got comfortable on the, in the dirt, as you can, you know, in the dirt. And the chairperson says, well, we think this, this inquiry that Sue's doing is very important, so we're going to ask her to come and speak first. <laughs> and I think, oh, God. You know, so get up off the ground. And it was totally out of order because, you know, Aboriginal society is a male-dominated society, and I always respect that. So it's, it's never mattered what a title I've got. I know I'm an Aboriginal woman, and if I'm at a community, I know my place, you know. But if I'm there to do a job, people then put you in to do that job. 